Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna check out Paul's 4,000 liter system, which has some absolutely to die for fish in it. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reef. I'm super pleased to be able to tell you that my tank tour journey continues and we are out and about all around the country. Today, we're going to New South Wales to see Paul's incredible 4,000 litre system, which has fish in there that either you've never seen before or you've only ever heard of them before. There's some absolute bucket list fish in this system and there's even more to come with some huge plans on this system to come, which we'll discuss in the video. I do want to give a quick shout out to Aquaforest, the Australian distributor, Oz Aquariums, who made it possible to get this video to you guys, as well as all of my fantastic channel members. So I'll go through those guys a little bit later in the video when I showcase the Aquaforest liquid foods getting fed to these fish because um, you don't want to miss that footage at the end. It's pretty exciting to see, but uh, probably no time like the present for me to roll the footage. We'll go meet Paul, see this incredible system, and of course, check out some of these ridiculously cool fish. Let's roll the footage. All right, I am here at Paul's beautiful house here. Come to check out this incredible fish only system. And uh, I've marked the man himself up to take us all through it. Firstly, thank you for having us here and uh, making it possible for us to share this tank with the uh, world from YouTube. Super, super awesome opportunity, so thank you. And um, tell us about your tank. H how long has it been running? Well, what size is it maybe first? Yeah, well, thanks for coming, Sam. I follow your channel. Awesome. Really enjoy what you do. Thank you. So this is a 4,000 litre system. Wow. Um, the, the concept was designed by Mitch from Aquazoo. Uh, the tank was put together by Chris from JZ Marine. Yeah, great. Um, and we've just evolved it from where it is and thrown a whole bunch of beautiful fish in. Indeed um, you have. I've got some really nice fish here, some fish that you don't see too often in the hobby. Yes. Um, so I can take you through some of those fish if you want me to. We'll, we'll jump into those soon. Bef yeah. Before we do, I mean, it's difficult to relay just the size of this beast on, yeah. um, on screen. Yeah. What sort of dimensions are we talking? So it's 3.6 meters. Wow. Uh, 1.2 meters wide. Yeah, And wow. then 80 centimeters tall. Um, big, big and tank. then we've got a sump underneath, which is about 3.3 meters oh, wow. yeah. long. So almost as long as the entire tank is the sump. Yeah, yeah. So, Incredible. Yes. And I love the position in the room here in the middle. So you've got almost four viewable sides. You, you can walk around the tank and see all these big fish swimming around in their, their full beauty, which is just yeah. spectacular, really yeah. nice layout. That's what I wanted was a peninsula tank. Yeah, yeah, mm. fantastic. Mm. Roughly how long has this system been running for now? So this is a new system. It's okay. been going for about four months. Oh, wow. So it's, it's really, really new. And we're still sort of adding equipment and fine tuning yep. it and, and playing with those things. But it's, yeah, fantastic to be okay. with. Okay, yeah. No, well, so you say this is a new system. It's been running for about four months. Yes. Have you been in the hobby for long? I, as a kid, I had tropical fish. Yes. Um, didn't really have the time to sort of do anything more. Yes. Um, and then... It's kind of when COVID happened. So about sure. two and a half years ago, I kind of thought, let me get back into fish again. Let's get into marine. I know it's hard, but I get some good advice and sure. maybe I can make a good start. Absolutely. And yeah, two and a half years later, here we are. Here we are, fantastic. Mm. So, oh, wow. <laughs> so, having gone from tropical fish as a youngster yeah. to deciding throughout COVID, you wanted to go marine and then somehow You've ended up with a 3.6 meter, 4,000 liter system here, here in your home. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It's well, not this... a path many follow. How, how, how does that happen? Well, this is an interim step. My wow. next tank will be 10,000. Holy moly, this is not the end goal. Wow. No, no, this is, this is to set this up as a prototype. I'm going to move to a new house. Okay. I'll have a separate plant room yeah, and wow. potentially a 10,000 litre tank. Holy moly, I cannot mm -hmm. wait to see that. That's Absolutely. incredible. So all the designs are in place with the architect. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's that, that's an envious position to be in, to think that uh, this 4,000 litre system in front of us here is literally going to be two and a half times the size of that. It, all things going to plan in the future, but... Uh, F focusing on this system for now, I mean, maybe we'll start from the top and we'll, we'll work our way down and then um, we'll come back and talk about the fish at the end because I think um, 
if you've had a little sneak peek of some of the fish swimming through here, there's no shortage of content to talk about there. But before we do get to that, a 4,000 litre system, what, is it, what does it take to run that? What, we've got, I can see some lighting up here. Yep. It is a yep. fish only system, so yep. it's going to make it a little easier on equipment, I'm assuming. It, it has, but a lot of the equipment we bought was yep. scalable to take us to that 10,000. Okay, yeah, right. So we've tried to to over allow for sort of some of that stuff. Yes. But you know, what we have at the top, we've got some Hydra 64s that yep. give us our lighting. Beautiful. Uh, and we managed to sort of mount those up towards the ceiling. Yes. Had my electrician come in and put all the power points we need. Beautiful. So we're trying to keep that as clean as possible. Yes. But we are gonna sort of improve that with some cross beams and try sure. and put some of the transformers and power supplies up. Yeah, in the nice, way. nice. Um, you wouldn't be looking up there too much anyway. I mean, I can see some fish in here. Like uh, this guy here, this is only the second time I've ever seen a kingy angel. Not something you uh, see all that often in your uh, reefing lifetime. So well, there's I, two in that this, in this tank. Well, I've got all right. two. I, I, see, I see the other one there now. I've seen yep. corrected. I've now seen three in my reefing life. Um, and, and two of them are right in front of me now. Beautiful so. fish. Simply special fish, so I can't imagine your eyes are going up to the, um, the, the power bricks up there all that often when you've got fish <laughs> no, like that in the system. No, absolutely not. And, and flow in a system like this, I can see we've got some MP60s up this yeah, end, is it? so yep. the, the issue we had is we've got our water coming out down this end, Yes. and given the length of the tank, it was suggested we actually get some flow coming back. Sure. So I've now got four MP60s yes. pumping that water to keep that circulation going. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So we're still yeah. fine tuning the output on that. Of course, yeah. Peninsula systems are traditionally always difficult on flow yes. as it is. Yes. Not many peninsula systems no. are 3.6 meters long. Mm. <laughs> it takes mm. it to another level. Yes. yes, yes. Because of the size of the tank, I mean, you've got some big, big fish in there that are obviously going to enjoy a little bit of flow to work against. Yeah. And yeah. Who, could, who can blame them? Uh, fantastic. Now, you said that the sump underneath the system's full length and, and you've got some of the equipment you're running is set to be able to scale up to that yes. near 10,000 litre mark. Can you run us through some of the, uh, the equipment or, or design process there? The design process was really the concept of, of Mitch at, yes. at Aquazoo, um, who sort of put together the concept and then we went around sort of ordering the equipment and working out whether the equipment's right. Yes. So the way it sort of flows, if you want to have a look at, yeah, at the sure, sump let's do it. and, yeah, yeah, and some of the it. things we've got. Yeah. Um, so we've got a roller system here that sucks out all the detritus Beautiful. and captures all of that. That's, so that's the, the new large refactory one. Refactory large. Yeah, yeah I think you did a review on that one. Didn't yeah, you? yeah. I've never actually seen the large in person though, and I'm surprised at just how large it is. That's uh, yeah. The the roller is is massive. Definitely, but it's, it's a really good product, and it's so far working really nicely. And Fantastic. you can control it with your phone. Yeah, it's so <laughs> always that's, great. That's that's nice. Definitely. Um, I've also got a Clarice in here as well. Yes. So I've got both those sort of products to be able to pull out some of that that stuff. I can imagine with this sort of fish load and the size of fish that, you know, there's going to be a little bit of waste to pull out of the system. Oh, absolutely. I'm <laughs> continually dealing with high nitrates and phosphates. I can imagine. So I've got a couple of skimmers in here. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I've got a, a Deltec 6000 and a Deltec 3000. Lovely. So again, lovely. overscaling for the size of the tank, but, yes. but necessary because of the, the fish and the bio load Definitely. that's going through here. Um, Next, we've got a, a sulfur reactor that we've Lovely. just installed um, to try and sort of manage those nitrates the best we can. So yeah. we're really just developing that. Beautiful. Once that bed's in, that'll sort out the nitrates very well. That's what I'm hoping. Big fan of a sulfur reactors for yeah. nitrates. And we've got um, all of my medias in here. And Lovely. if you actually go and you can see the flow that we've got coming through the tank yeah. from one end to the other and a couple of abyss... Um, pumps that are just throwing that water back I mean, in. I'm a big fan of the Abyss pumps. Yeah. Look, I'll be the first to say they're not a cheap pump, mm. um, but you get every single cent that you pay for yes. in value on them. They're, they're just yeah. an incredible pump. And that comes from my family uh, ran a pump shop for mm. many years mm. and uh, I've seen a lot of pumps in my time. Yes. And when I saw the Abyss, I was like, holy heck, yeah. this is just another level. So, yeah, no, fantastic. Yeah, as a, as the, the beating heart of your system, I think mm. the return pumps are critical. So to see yeah. a nice high quality pump like that yeah, definitely. works well. So we might go to the other side yeah, if sure. you like, because I've got some more equipment around here. Yeah, I did see some more um, things sneaking in down there. 
We've got, uh, it's a bit messy at the moment, but All good. what we've got here is we've got um, an auto top up yes. for the RO water. So outside, yes. I've got a really big RO unit. Lovely. And I've got um, some tanks that have got the RO water. Yes. And I've also got a, a couple of 500 litre drums, which is where I mix my salt water. Okay. Yep. Okay. And I'm using a couple of Kamoas. Yes. Um, that actually do the auto water changes Beautiful. for yeah, me. Yeah. So I've got this tank and another tank set up for that yes. and we're about to install on a third tank okay, well, so the product works really well i got the idea off your channel <laughs> fantastic <laughs> so we've got a, a kh keeper plus in here yeah lovely which i think is another one of the products that you've reviewed yeah, and so yeah. that's monitoring my alk for me and is sending me alerts as to any movements with the alk yes and that's fantastic and imagine in a fish system with this kind of bio load i know that uh, alkalinity does get uh, chewed up a bit by yep. bacteria yep. colonization so Keeping a close eye. I mean, obviously, there's no corals in there, but alkalinity is still going to fluctuate oh, and it will affect the fish. So, yeah, absolutely. nice insurance. So, the piece of the resistance of this tank is the UV system. <laughs> I can see a so little bit of So, I'm not sure whether you've heard there. of the, the, the UV system we've got in wow. here. So, I'm not sure whether you can focus on this. Yeah. So, this is a product that I managed to get from Fresh by Design down in Mossvale. Yeah. And so, this thing has 880 watts wow. system. It's an incredible UV system um, <laughs> and comes, <laughs> so it's an ultra aqua system. It comes with its own monitoring. Wow. So you can actually program it. It measures the UV dosage that I'm receiving at the moment. This is a serious bit of gear. Absolutely, it was a serious piece of gear that we had to import from Denmark. Wow, okay. And then we have um, the ozone machines. Yeah, nice ozone tech. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, yeah, they make some quality gear there. So, well. so Gareth managed to import these for me. And, and so I've got that all set up into the tank. Um, <laughs> Look at the, the reduction from the, the body of the UV. Yeah. Goes up, and yeah. this is still a big pipe. I know. <laughs> Compared yeah. to a lot of people just have like a, a 20 mil or three quarter yeah. inch tube coming off their UV. But look at that, look Absolutely. at these bolts holding the holding the flange on there. And, uh, it's, it's heavy duty commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, it's fantastic. Um, we've got some dosing here um, and a CO2 scrubber. Lovely. Um, I'm gonna update the dosing next so we can sort of link that to the ALK system. Yes. And um, we've got a, a small chiller as well, sort Beautiful. of just to sort of help manage the temperature because it does get a little bit warm in this room. Sure. Um, At least, uh, the fish only system is probably not going to generate quite as much heat. No. Um, you get away with a little bit less lighting and a yes. um, little bit less flow and just yeah. a little less equipment all around. So, yeah. Yeah. plus the fish are a little bit more tolerant than some of those ultra sensitive SBS on, on temperature swings. Exactly. So it's, exactly. It's, um, it's good yeah. to see. I mean, I would. I mean, obviously, with the investment of fish you have in this system, I yes. would absolutely run a chiller. But um, I, can, yeah. I can see why you don't need a chiller the size of the room to no, to no, maintain its temperature. Yeah, and um, I've got a couple of these flippers. Uh, this is a new one, uh, the Edge. So yep. it's got both sides to it. So that is a really good product that enables me to go backwards and forwards and clean the glass. Yeah, nice. The hardest thing in a big tank is cleaning it, you yeah. know, because you can't really get in, you can't reach in. I've got a ladder and all of <laughs> so, that sort of helps me sort of manage it. It's a lot of glass to clean too. It, it certainly is. Particularly so when you've keep got- it as pristine as we can. Well, you've got, what's this? You've got basically eight meters of glass to clean there because yes. you've got 3.6 plus 80 plus another 3.6 so yeah it is starfire glass so we did sort of uh, get the glass to be the best we could yeah nice nice yeah, so uh, we can enjoy the fish. quality tank looks yeah really nice solid bracing on it That's oh yeah there's nothing moving in this tank yeah <laughs> imagine it would have been a fair <laughs> effort getting this tank in here yeah it's been a fairly heavy right. move and doing the aquascape as well. Yeah, tell us about the aquascape. That's quite a nice build. Yeah, so the aquascape was really just a, a bit of imagination of mine, Mitch getting in the tank for me, Mitch, me passing in the rocks, and, <laughs> and the design was to sort of try and do different areas, areas sure. where larger fish could go, smaller fish could go, and medium-sized fish could yeah, go. Okay, so they perfect. would all have their own little homes, and they would all ha have a refuge where they could sort of go to at night, or in case they were subject to an aggressive fish in the tank. Definitely. Mm. Well, as you describe it, the fish have absolutely followed suit. They obviously saw the, uh, the the playbook and decided to work with it as well because as you were describing it, I could see 
the larger fish congregating in the yes. caves there and yes. the smaller guys in the middle here. And yeah. then you can still see some medium guys, well, what most people would call extra large, but in this tank, medium-sized guys um, congregating yeah. in, in this rock. Absolutely, so they, yes. They've definitely got the bill. And, and okay, tell us, tell us about the fish. You've got lots to cover in absolutely, here. So. Absolutely, <laughs> Let's see, you don't have to go through so any particular one order. One of the reasons why I wanted fish only was because I could have a lot of fish and I know that has a lot of nitrates and yes. it makes it hard to handle with, with corals. But the other reason is I just love the angelfish. Sure. And a lot of angelfish you can't have with corals. Yes, for sure. So, you know, to me, having sort of, you know, like the queen, the queen is just such a beautiful she's fish. A beautiful fish, yeah, you know, such presence. Um, she's really gorgeous. The, the massive French angelfish that I've got there. Yeah. I mean, you don't know. often get to see them get remotely that size in a, in a home aquarium. So, and that's the beauty of having a big tank. You can allow those fish to get as big as their potential almost. Yes. Yeah. You know, I've got a, a gorgeous rock beauty with the, yeah. the blue eyes. The colors on her are stunning. As, stunning. As the tiger angelfish you pointed out previously. Yeah. yeah. Are really nice. Um, Quite a rare fish indeed. An asper. With the beautiful I've purple and yellow that the Never even have. heard of an Aspen before, so yeah, that's... Arabian, nice. yeah. Very nice. Um, what else have we got over here? If we stick with our angelfish, there's a little half moon, uh, which is a, sort of a poor man's Asper. <laughs> <laughs> We've, uh, the, the king's decided to go around the other side, okay. so it's nice to be able to keep a king and a queen in the same tank, because yeah, often which, they're quite aggressive towards exactly. each other. Exactly, yeah, yeah. In a four um, foot system, that wouldn't work yeah. too well. <laughs> Um, I've got a gold flake. If we yeah. look at the gold flake. Stunning fish. Beautiful gold flake. Uh, fortunate enough also to have a, f uh, a grey angel okay. in here as well. So the grey and the French get on okay. Beautiful. And my king's joined us, so um, His Majesty's decided to pay us a visit. <laughs> And then we've got, um, I think it's about 18 or 19 tangs in this tank. Yes. Um, so no one called the police, but I think it's big enough. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, don't think you'll have any trouble with the tank police in a so uh, system got, this um, size. <clears throat> Atlantic, now he will really grow quite large. Yeah, I've um, got an Atlantic in my system and yeah. it's the only fish in your tank that I have that is bigger in my tank. <laughs> <laughs> but that won't be for long. He's still got the juvenile yellow tail. Yes, he has. Um, so he yeah, has. you'll get, mind you, he's, he only, only looks small in, in a system this size. He's not a small fish. He's, mm. he's a big fish, but yeah, he oh, will yes. get bigger. Absolutely. Uh, what else have we got um, in the see tank? see a nice mustard there. Yes, mustard or jewel, I think sometimes they call them yep, that one. Yep. Uh, a yellow tang Iconic as well. Iconic yellow as yeah. a gem. I even saw a long nose yeah. black yeah. tang in there as well. Yeah. Someone even referred to the, the gem as a barcode. Okay, he's, actually, he's, he's, he's got he's, the line dots. He's got dashes rather than dots. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. He's nice, um, big, healthy specimen too. Absolutely. Look at the, the, the no Nas shortage of food. And we've got the Nasso tang who's just gone past oh. us as well. That's a male. Yeah, look at with the streamers. streamers yeah. and, and he's a Beautiful fish when you, when they get to that size. Definitely, yep, yep. I have a real soft spot for narsos, particularly the males with the streamers. Mm -hmm. Such a beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. and definitely, look at the, the uh, scalpels on the tail. I mean, mm. big, big mm. daughter fish. Oh, beautiful, yes. beautiful. Yes. So many more. Yes. Big so hole in there as well. Yes, big so hole and. Um He's always a challenge to keep a soul hole in a tank, but he seems to be going okay at the seems moment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got plenty of other big players in here. He that does. Should sort of keep his keep him calm, keep him in check. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a hybrid gold rim Ooh, over yes. there as well. Very who's, nice. Who's pretty special? So many fish. <laughs> We're um, barely touching the uh, the top of the list. There's, you can see um, a nice convict over there. Yes, there's two convicts in this tank. Two convicts, beautiful. Yep. There's a nice Desjardini there. Yes, beautiful when he opens up his fins. Look at this French. Ooh. Yes, magnificent. He was half of the reason why I built this big tank. I just yeah. wanted to show him off. I don't blame you. <laughs> that was a good choice. What a stunning fish. And what's, uh, oh, we got a, uh, the, the angel. Mickey? Yeah, oh, uh, no, the angel, yeah. sorry. The, oh, the angel? That's a um, sort of transition. Swallowtail? Yeah. Swallowtail? Angel, just transitioning yeah. from yes. male to female, or yeah. female to male. Or? Yeah, that's what we think yeah. he is actually doing. That, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's a nice flame angel. Yeah, he's quite chunky. It's in the Achilles, 
Yeah, I did see him swim past there, there's he goes. There's Achilles. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a nice big belly on you too, you're doing well. Ah, yes, they, they love their feet time. <laughs> I can imagine. There's a purple in the middle of the tank as well. Lovely. Just have a look at the purple. And uh, this conspic? No. No. Uh, Poma? Poma, yeah. 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 Phantom one, the, the Poma, Poma. I think he's the Phantom one. Yeah, I think okay. he is. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a nice red chorus down there, has some beautiful colour yeah. to the tank. There's a swarm of small fish in there too. I can see multiple uh, really high-end designer clowns in yes. here. Yes, yes. There's some All beautiful sort of some frost bites. Um, there's a couple of black and whites that must be on the other side that have had for probably a couple of years. Of yep. Nice and Chunky. Oh yes, there he is. Oh yeah. Storm, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Black storm. <clears throat> Beautiful fish. Uh, I'm still taken back a little by the kingies, the the tiger angels. They are. Uh, they're such a hardy fish. They, yeah. Yeah. How long have you been them for now? I would say year and a half. the oldest one's probably yeah a year and a half, and, yeah, okay. and they've been great for me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Annularis is is in the middle there. If you can sort of somehow see him with your camera. I'll try to get some footage of him yeah, <laughs> a little, yeah. little later on once I get the DSLR yeah, out. But yeah, uh, yeah there's a, there's an overwhelming number of overwhelmingly beautiful fish in here. That um, and some sleeper goby there. Sleeper gobies. So keeping they the, tunnel the their clean. way through the the <laughs> sand and they sort of cave in the rocks as well because they take the footing as away. <laughs> so, there's a few butterflies in here too, I yes, see. Yeah. There's uh, a couple of Burgess butterflies yeah. that I had to get. Yep. Um, Beautiful. We've got a nice Moorish idol up at the end there. Yes. There's one of these uh, butterflies coming along. Yep. So he's a Burgess butterfly. Burgess come along right mm -hmm. on you. And there's mm -hmm. that black tang. Black yeah. tang. Yeah, I've had the black tang for quite some time now. He's probably a year and a half old okay. with me. Yes. And I bought him from someone else as well. Sure. Yeah. 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 The cow. We can't cow. can't forget the cowfish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the angels just come and move him on. He's pretty cool. Get him into the spotlight. Yeah. Super cool fish. Yeah. So, tell me, is there plans? I know you've got plans to eventually go up to, to mm -hmm. potentially a ten thousand liter tank, yes. which is going to be just uh, yeah. something else. Yeah. Is there any plans for this system in the meantime, or is it just really just? This is the, the trial run, just to sort of iron out any of those kinks and streamline processes. And it just... is. I, th I think it, this is a prototype for me to get used to managing a large tank sure. okay. and the type of equipment we need to manage a large tank. You yes. know, so we can sort of get things like nitrates and the bio load and the phosphates under good control. Yes. So that's, that's the lessons we want to learn from sure. that. Um, as you can probably see, there's not too many fish that I need to top up to the tank. There, <laughs> no. are, there are a couple more that I've sort of got my eye on. Yeah, is there um, any fish on, on your wish list? Anything that, uh, if, if something came up? So I, I do want to get a couple of raw time butterfly fish. Okay, yeah, um, A zebra tang. Yes. And a blue line angel fish. Okay, nice, nice. So they're, they're my remaining fish. That okay, I <laughs> so, so there's room for another Absolutely. three or four to go in. Absolutely. Yeah, what a spectacular arrangement. And some of these, as we said, like the Atlantic Blue, still got some growing to do. Oh, yes, he'll, um, he'll get much bigger. Yeah, still, still, oh, look at that. I'm drawn to him every time he goes past. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Incredible. And I am somewhat surprised with the number of fish in there and for the um, relatively short time frame this has been running, that mm. there seems to be very little aggression. I think... You know, they, none of them really have a territory. Okay. So they don't have anything to defend. Sure. Uh, and as long as I keep feeding them, yes. then they're not sort of constantly searching and pushing and, and that sort of thing. No, so that makes sense. I think that diffuses the aggression to some extent, is yes. to overcrowd, but then that causes you problems with, with nitrates and phosphates. <laughs> and <laughs> There's that always, sort of thing. always so challenges in their ripping world. Sort of get the balance, and there is absolutely. Uh, did we look at the blue angel fish? I don't uh, think we he's did. Gone he's gone hiding, well. but I did see him, so he yeah. thought about coming out. So it's nice <laughs> to sort of keep a blue angel fish with a with a queen. Yes. So you don't see too many blue angel fish in the hobby either. No. 
more the fish. Yeah. So it's simply stunning. And um, I know I'm going to definitely get uh, my, my DSLR out and take a ridiculous number of photos of all of these fish mm. because, as I touched on, some of these mm. uh, are fish you just mm. don't get the opportunity to see all that time, all that often, um, even with the number of roof tanks I yeah. see. So I'll be sure to put... Mm. No shortage of footage on screen now of, of all the footage I capture of these fish. Excellent. But um, well, to, there is another tank. In. Yeah, it's got oh, some other special fish here. Please, in. yes. So I, I did catch you, a little side eye of that before. to move over to those? Of course, yeah, please. So <clears throat> I want to take you to um, this is my five foot water box. Yes. But this has some also some special fish in it. That it does. We have um, a bandit, angelfish. And a solid banded at that too yeah what a he's quite unit. fat and happy yeah. <laughs> uh, as you can see there's a japanese interruptus gorgeous a conspic a gem tang and a potter's angel fish so feminist wrath this, yeah and of course a feminist wrath so yeah. these guys are going to stay together as is okay this, this will be their tank and um they're pretty happy in there and so that's uh, a bit of a special tank as yeah, well. Yeah, nice, you know, nice. Some so beautiful fish in the big tank, but this tank has also got uh, some fish that you don't see very often in the hobby. Definitely. Particularly and the, with the Hawaiian ban on. The thought process between uh, keeping these guys out of out of the main system is just... It's just really to be able to enjoy them in sure. their own separate tank yeah, okay, where yep, you yep. can sort of focus on them. Yes. In the bigger tank, some of those smaller special fish yes. would get lost. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, completely understandable. And um, yeah, when you've got fish of this yeah. caliber, you want to be able to come and see them at any time. And yeah, that you can do in here, and they're all happy as a group in there, all, yes. all happily swimming yes. around together, no yep. aggression, everything's yep. great. Little conspic is hopefully growing, and yeah, he'll get quite quite large. Definitely, definitely, it's a stunning fish. Amazing, and then you've got even more in another system next to well, it. Well, this system is my quarantine tank, but it also contains the orphans. Okay. So some of these fish ended up, were originally put in the big tank. Yes. Were subject to some aggression. Sure. Did get picked on, and so I brought them into this tank to let them recover, to you know give them whatever dosing bite. they need and, yep. and recover, and then I can work out what I need to do to them, yeah. whether yep. I put them into an isolation box in the big tank. Yes or how I manage them going sure forward. Thing. Yeah, I can imagine on a, on a system that size with that many fish, particularly the size and the type of fish you have in there, that, mm. that there's always going to be a chance that exactly. uh, two personalities don't get along. Yeah, exactly. So having a system there that you can move mm. them into is, is very good insurance uh, yeah. just to keep your options open. Definitely. And there, there's, some, there's some pretty fish in here, that's for sure. Yes, there's some nice ones in there. You can see the Cortez, unfortunately, he was getting picked on by the blue face okay, in the yeah, other right, tank, right. so he's a little bit sort of battered, but, uh, he'll, color but he'll recover. Up. Yeah, yeah. Um, These poor guys, they are a bit more timid. They are they in their are, recovery yeah. mode, so, so I won't wave the camera too much in their A little bit of shell face. shock in there, so. No, that's fair, that's fair. That's an incredible system already, and to think that this is really just, um, well, not to diminish it, but this is, this is the, the the trial run before the main event, which is um, yeah, is, is one of the rare times I'm left fairly speechless. So um, congratulations on an incredible system so far. And um, I cannot wait to see uh, the, the build and the plans for that next system, because that's going to be, it would have to be one of the biggest uh, private reef or private aquariums in the country, yeah. which will be stocked with some of the best fish in the country, which yeah. is just going to be a sight to behold. So. Firstly, congratulations on that, and thank you for having us here. And um, yeah, well done. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate you coming. Thanks. All right, guys, there you have it. That is Paul's 4,000 litre fish only system. And I hate to say the words or the phrase fish only when describing this tank because yeah, sure, it's fish only, but the fish are ridiculously cool and there's even more coolness to come, let alone before we even start discussing that brand new 10,000 litre fish only system that the house is literally getting built around. Now, I am hoping that I can stay in touch with Paul and I can get back there to make sure I document both the build as well as obviously the finished product of that ridiculously cool 10,000 litre system and hopefully get a chance to see things like those wrought iron butterflies that may 
or may not be coming to the system in the future. I do want to give a massive shout out to Aquaforest. You'll be seeing some of the footage on screen now of their liquid foods, which we tested out on Paul's system. And um, I'm sure you can see from the way these fish absolutely smashed every bit of food we put into that system that it's obviously a very high quality liquid food, which is also super convenient when you don't want to get your hands all sort of uh, fishy with dealing with frozen food or pallets. You can open up these liquid foods, give it a quick squirt in the tank and your fish are going to munch that down and you are off to uh, dinner or whatever it is you need to do without getting yourself all smelly. So massive thank you to Oz Aquariums and Aquaforest for making this video possible. And of course, each and every one of my channel members, you should be seeing their names on screen now. These guys pitch in a couple of dollars each and every month to make tours like this possible. It's not easy getting out around the country to make these tank tours possible, but I really, really do appreciate these guys making it happen because um, the power of numbers makes it all makes it all possible. And uh, these people's names on screen now make that possible. So massive shout out to my channel members. If you are interested in joining, you can click the join button down next to that subscribe button. It'll go through all the different package options that are available there, but uh, absolutely no pressure as this if you want to get even further involved in this channel. Other than that, guys, I think I'll wrap the video up there. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a truly once in a lifetime opportunity to meet Paul and to see this system. Like I said, up to this point in time, I have been around the hobby for about four nearing 15 years now and I've seen one kingy angel before to see two of them in the one system a huge 4,000 litre system at that was just something that absolutely took my breath away so thanks again to Paul for making it possible I don't think I've got anything else to say if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up of course if you have any questions for myself or of course Paul or any of the people that I've mentioned in this video please feel free to pop the comments in that section down below I do personally reply to each and every one of them there so it is the best way to get hold of me other than that, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. Hit that button in the bottom corner there. It takes two seconds of your time, costs no money whatsoever, but does still go a long way to supporting the channel. So please do jump on board our 26,000 strong membership group now. It's fantastic. Other than that, guys, I think I will leave you with it. Till next time, stay safe and keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.